uh, title of the message tonight. We're going to be looking at the way of the cross. So uh, 1 Corinthians 15, we'll read uh, first three verses, says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Let's not ever forget that. Our salvation is because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Of course, the rest of the verse, uh, verses there concerning the gospel is that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. But tonight we're going to look at that first part of the gospel of how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And so we're going to look at the cross tonight. So let's pray. Father, we just pray that you would help, help us, Lord, as we look to your word and that we may lift up Jesus Christ. Lord, not put him on the cross again, but be thankful for the cross. Be thankful in remembering just what you did for us. And Lord, to see it very clearly through scripture. And Lord, to appreciate it, to be thankful for it. And if anyone has never received it, I just do pray that they might receive that wonderful gift of love that was given to us by the Father, the gift of his Son, to die on the cross for our sins. And we thank you for that. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to take you to the Old Testament, if you would, uh, to the Psalms, Psalm 22, verse number 1, because the Old Testament prophesied of Jesus' death on the cross. And the Old Testament does not mention a cross because when the Old Testament portions of Scripture were written, the cross had not been invented. Now, we think of a cross, as we see one right here, we think of it as something that brings comfort, but the cross was a place of death, a place of torture, a place of agony. But the Apostle Paul tells us that we should glory in the cross, that we should not glory in anything save in the cross of Jesus Christ. And so the cross to us is something glorious. Now, salvation has always been by the cross. In the Old Testament, it was those looking forward to the cross. And for us, we're looking back at what already happened at the cross. The cross is the crux. That word crux that sometimes is used to mean it is the center thing. It is literally the crux of the Bible, what the Bible is all about, the scripture is all about. It leads up to the cross. It points us back to the cross. Without the cross, without Christ's death, according to the scriptures, we cannot have salvation. And unless Christ rose again from the dead, according to the scriptures, we cannot have salvation. But let's look here in Psalm 22 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We know Jesus said those words from the cross. Why art thou so far from helping me and from the, uh, from the words of my roaring? Skip on to verse 6, please. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. That word worm is tola. It has a very important meaning because uh, the tola, the, that actual worm, was the crimson, uh, where they got the crimson color from. In the Old Testament, uh, book of Isaiah, when it talks about our sins being red like crimson, that's the word tola. And it speaks of that, that worm that was crushed uh, to bring forth that pigment, that dye, that crimson. God says because of that worm, that tola that was crushed, our sins can be washed as white as snow. And Jesus is that worm that was crushed. I am but a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. And certainly Jesus was despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him seeing he delighted in him. Those words were spoken by the Pharisees, spoken by the Sadducees, that they walked by and they wagged their heads while Jesus was on the cross. Let's get down to 14, verse 14. I am poured out like water, 
and all my bones are out of joint. Jesus Christ, he was uh, the water of life that was poured out for us. That picture of water being poured out goes all the way back into the Old Testament. Uh, the, the ceremonies, and Brother Russell talked about it last week, as they, uh, during that ceremony of water and light at the Feast of Tabernacles, they would pour the water out as a drink offering unto the Lord, and uh, picturing the supernatural provision of that water of life, Jesus was poured out for us. All of his bones were out of joint as Jesus hung on the cross. That cross was uh, dropped into the hole there on Mount Calvary. Uh, all of Jesus' bones would have went out of joint. His heart, it says, is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels, and certainly his heart did melt. And we, we read from Scripture in the book of Luke that when the, the spear was thrust into his side, out came blood and water, and literally Jesus died of a broken heart, a heart that exploded. It says in verse 15, My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. Jesus cried out from the cross, I thirst. Thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. And a Jew would refer to the Gentiles as dogs. And Jesus was gathered around by the Gentiles, by the Romans, who, uh, who pierced his hands and his feet. Zechariah 12, verse 10, it says, a part, portion of that verse says, And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. I may tell all my bones, verse 17, they look and stare upon me as Jesus was beaten with the flagellum of the Romans. His body was shredded. His flesh was shredded and riven. His, his side and his arms and his legs and everything was beaten and he was not recognizable, as the scripture tells us, could not be recognized as a man. Verse 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. His, his garments were gambled for, and Jesus uh, was, uh, his, his belongings were taken there at the foot of the cross. Isaiah 53, look at uh, the, these verses. Isaiah 53, verse 3. Through five, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him, and he was despised, and we de esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Many times in Scripture we see Jesus and his, uh, we see his joy, we see Jesus and his jubilance, we see Jesus with his disciples and teaching. We see Jesus in all the different emotions. Sometimes we see the anger that comes forth righteously as he would enter into the temple and, and he would drive them out. We see Jesus in, in sorrow that he would have as he's, as he's there with Mary and Martha uh, in the Lazarus tomb and he weeps with them. But here we see that Jesus is sorrowful. As he was there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was sorrowing and uh, he was smitten with our sorrow. He was carrying our sorrow. He was carrying our griefs. And he went to the cross with all of that because there was no other way and there was no other place to go. He, he was destined for the cross. As we see here in verse number, uh, verse number four, we es did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And those who were there cursing Christ they're saying he's getting what he deserves. He's getting what he deserves, but truly we deserved that death. Verse 5, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We don't have time to go into those three words, bruised, and, and, and there he was talking about uh, wounded and chastisement. And really all the implications of how severe it was that Jesus was beaten and how he was wounded for us. It tells us in verse 7 that he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. 
Jesus didn't open in his, he didn't open his mouth. Jesus, he didn't try to defend himself. Jesus didn't, uh, you know, try to cast back uh, the, the arrows uh, of slander that he was receiving. He didn't try to get uh, cast back at the mockings. He took it all as a lamb that was brought to the slaughter. And as his sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Verse 8, he was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. That phrase cut off is also used in the book of Daniel. And when Daniel was prophesying about the Messiah, he's, Daniel said, after, after so many weeks, which in his prophecy a week referred to a number of years, that the Messiah would be cut off. And so we know from Scripture uh, that the Messiah could only be Jesus. Jesus Christ is the Messiah for the Jew, for the Gentile, for the world. And it says in verse 9, he, was made, he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Only one man died with the wicked at his left hand and his right and also was buried in, in a tomb of a rich man, the Lord Jesus Christ being buried in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. And so we see so many scriptures in the Old Testament. We just barely looked at uh, a, a couple of passages speaking of who Messiah would be and what would happen. But these clearly prophesy Jesus' death on the cross. And they point to who he was. It said in the last uh, day of Jesus' uh, life there, as he would go to the cross, he fulfilled like 33 specific prophecies there on that very last day. And so the, the scripture, the Old Testament, points to the cross, the cross upon which Jesus died. So I want you to turn to page 129 in your songbook. I want to sing with you here. We don't need a, a instruments, but we'll use our we'll use our God given instrument here and sing at the cross, at the cross. So page 129. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a the cross at the cross 
was where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Amen. Thank God that we can be happy about the cross, because at the time when it was happening, the people were not happy. They were weeping. The Bible says that they were smiting themselves on the chest, and they were just in terrible grief over what had happened as Jesus had died and all of the events and the people they went to their homes, and uh, they, they were just grief-stricken there. But we can be joyful and happy that the story didn't end there. Well, secondly, I'll we'll look, look at that Jesus taught his disciples that his path led to the cross. So not only did the Old Testament show us that Jesus was going to go to the cross, but Jesus taught his disciples that that's where he was going. I am going to the cross. So look at Mark 8, 31. Mark chapter 8, verse 31, and says, And he, Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And then again in Mark chapter 9, verse 31. So Jesus didn't just do this on one occasion and it was not just right before the cross. It was fairly early in his ministry there that he was trying to teach his disciples that's what was going to happen. Verse 31, For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise again the third day. And so Jesus was telling his disciples that I'm going to the cross. But, you know, we, we looked in our uh, uh, preaching a couple of weeks ago or Wednesday nights ago about being a disciple. And Jesus, he was trying to teach his disciples that not only was there a cross for him, but there was a cross for them as well. So Jesus, he showed his disciples that the cross was necessary for them to become one of his disciples. Matthew 10, verse 38 says, And he taketh, he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Now, there's a definite difference between the cross that we should take and then the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, that is a phrase of Scripture. If you want to look and search that, you can search cross of Christ. And so the cross of Christ is, is one that he bore for us. He took our sins to his cross. He nailed uh, our sins to the cross. And so the cross that we bear is not one that uh, is, is a cross of sin and suffering, but rather the cross that we bear is one of surrender. And so a cross was a final destination. You did not carry a cross around everywhere. You had a definite destination for that cross, and it would end in death. And so when Jesus was telling his disciples that you take, uh, he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. And in Luke 9, 23, he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He's talking about going to a specific destination, and that is one of self-denial and self-death. And that's what the Apostle Paul agreed with. He said, I die daily. I die daily. And he said, this body that I'm in, it needs to be crucified. And I am crucified with Christ. And so to be Christ's disciple, the cross needs to be an integral part of our life. The cross needs to be someplace that we visit, not once a year, not once a season, it's a place we need to visit every day. We need to go to the cross every single day and realize that our life isn't our own. And a man who's carrying a cross, he's not carrying his life around. He's carrying around the death of Jesus Christ, bearing in his, in his body 
uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done. And that's what the Apostle Paul tried to teach us from. So in the scripture, in the scripture, let's look at uh, the ordinances of baptism and the Lord's Supper that, that Christ gave the church, that he gave us to remember. He gave us to, to remember his death on the cross. I want you to look at Romans chapter 6, verse 4, briefly, a uh, quote part of that verse. And the Apostle Paul writes, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. And then in Colossians chapter 12, uh, 2, verse number 12, he writes as well, Buried with him in baptism. And so water baptism, an ordinance of uh, the, the church that Jesus Christ gave, uh, he, told, uh, he told his church to go into all nations, and preach the gospel to go unto all nations, teaching them uh, and then baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so that ordinance of baptism is so that we will know and identify with his death. And so the church that Jesus Christ established here on this earth so long ago and still uh, is, is still alive today needs to remember our Lord dying on the cross for us. And that is the power that we have is because of the cross. The gospel of Jesus Christ, it, it, it first speaks of the cross. And the book of Romans chapter 1 verse, 60, uh, verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And so the, the cross of Christ was not a place of weakness. The cross of Christ was not a place of defeat. The cross of Christ is a place of victory. And our victory in Jesus Christ is because he didn't stay dead. Amen. And he did accomplish what he set out to do. He lived a perfect life and he went to the cross as a perfect lamb, a perfect sacrifice. And he died for our sins and he bore our sins for us. And he was cut off from God and he hung between heaven and earth, becoming a curse for us. And he accomplished what the father set uh, him out to do. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 speaks of. The Lord's Supper and the Apostle Paul had to straighten out the, the church of Corinth on this. We'll, we'll probably look at it a little more depth, but here he writes, I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. This is uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it. And said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Something interesting to know when you read the book of John, that John chapter 13 through John chapter 19 is one day. <laughs> okay. John chapter 13 through John chapter 19 is one day. John chapter 12 is six days before that. When Jesus goes into Bethany in there and he's... Uh, anointed by Mary, and he washes the disciples' feet and all that. You know, I mean, it, we're talking about from that span of John 12 it, to uh, the, John chapter 19 is just one week, okay? And so anyway, we see here that uh, verse 24, when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. So the breaking of bread which they already would have been accustomed to do because of the Passover. Jesus died on Passover. What, we need to remember that. Jesus died on Passover. Jesus did not die on Good Friday. Okay? Jesus died on Passover. And, uh, and so uh, when Jesus died that day, he was the Passover lamb that died for our sins. And so Jesus, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do not, uh, it was not a sacrament when she was given uh, or giving so that we might obtain grace. That's what a sacrament is. Something you do to get grace. Jesus said, do this or take bread that is unleavened 
and break it and eat it and do that in remembrance of his body which was broken for us. And then verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup when he supped, saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And again, that, that juice of the vine, that grape juice, not wine, make clear of that, not alcoholic wine was given to us to remember his body and his blood that was perfect without sin, without leaven, without decay. And so we do that to remember him. In verse 26, as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he come. We do need to remember that the Lord is alive, but also God wants us to remember that he died for our sins. He died for our sins according to the scripture. He died for our sins. And lest we forget that we need to remember the cross. We're going to sing again, page 118. Page 118, and invite you to sing with me when I survey the wondrous cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor content. Disciple demands our soul, our life, our all, and that's why Jesus said, take up the cross. And then lastly, I want to give you, as Christ followers, as disciples, we should want to, desire to be more like the master, master, but the way to be more like Jesus is the way of the cross. So let's look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, I'll start turning in the songbook again. I need the Bible. All right, Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10. Philippians 3, verse number 10 says, the Apostle Paul wrote, that I may know him. That I may know him. How are we going to know him? It says, in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I do like that the Apostle Paul put to the front the power of his resurrection, because without the resurrection, the cross would mean nothing. But he said, being made conformable 
unto his death. The likeness that we have in Jesus Christ as a disciple of his, as a follower of his, our life needs to be made conformable unto his death. As Jesus was obedient in all things, as Jesus uh, was surrendered unto the Father, so should we as well in following him. How do we know uh, uh, how Jesus was? We need to look unto him continually. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse number 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the Alpha and the Omega of our faith. He is the one who began, the one who finished, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. And so we, we could look at the Garden of Gethsemane and we see Jesus' prayer, which was recorded and said that he prayed three times, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me, not my will but thine be done. Not as I will, but as thou wilt. And so Jesus, he did pray, Lord, if there be any other way, and heaven was silent. There was no answer. Because there was only one way. The cross was the only way. And he said, not my will, but thine be done. And so for Jesus, it was his joy to go to the cross it was his desire to go to the cross. His disciples, they questioned that he would go to the cross. And, and, and his disciple Peter took that sword and cut off the ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant, in trying to defend him, but would later deny him. Jesus said, put away your sword. He says, shouldn't I take this cup and also drink it, this cup that my father has given me? Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Jesus was made for the suffering of death. Jesus could not suffer death. The Son of God could not suffer death unless he had become a man. And so the plan of God from the foundation of the world is that God would become man. And God fulfilled that plan all throughout Scripture. In, in, in bringing a man whose name was Abraham into a land and gave him a, 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 a promised son named Isaac and then uh, gave them 12 tribes and then God moved through their family uh, and did miraculous things. But then uh, through a, a number of generations brought forth the son of God there in Bethlehem who would live a, a wonderful, perfect life and who would uh, uh, heal and, and uh, he would preach and he would teach and he would uh, show compassion and he would do all kinds of wonderful things and then he would go to a cross and, and dying for our sins. And so we need to look to Christ. We need to look to Jesus and we need to see Jesus and what he's done. But certainly here it says, he came for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, and that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For as much then as the children are partakers, this is verse 14, of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Jesus destroyed the power of death through his death, because Jesus rose again. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. To be like Christ, we need to look unto Jesus and see that his joy, his joy was suffering for our sins. His joy was completing that which the Father gave him to do. His joy was to be able to cry from that cross, it is finished, paid in full. We should have that same joy to do what God has sent us to do, what God has called us to do. If that takes us through suffering, we should have the desire to be surrendered to the Lord to say, so be it. It will be my joy to follow in his steps. Jesus humbled himself, and so we should do as well. Humble ourselves and become obedient. God might call us to 
be obedient unto death as the Lord did? They may not. But still, we need to be obedient unto death. Jesus was obedient even unto the death of the cross. God might call us to suffer. He may call us to martyrdom. He may not. But the Lord wants us to be obedient nonetheless. There's never a time for us to give up. There's never a time for us to give in. Never a time for us to uh, quit. Uh, quit on God. Uh, but the Lord wants us to be obedient unto death till he calls us home. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 1 Peter 2, 21. Look through verse 24. For even hereunto ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. It doesn't say follow in his steps. It says follow his steps. God wants us to follow Christ wherever he would lead us. Christ suffered for us. Verse 22, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself unto him that judges righteously. Verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. God wants us to follow his steps, follow the steps of Christ. And the steps of Christ may lead us unto death, but certainly they're going to lead us to life, to life eternal. And Jesus, he, Jesus, he said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And the abundant life that God wants us to live is going to be a life that is lived like the master that has lived following Jesus Christ. So lastly, I want you to turn in, in the hymnal to page 124. Page 124, we'll see the first and last verse of Lead Me to Calvary. First and last verse here. I'll take this off so you don't have to hear me. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for Thee. Even Thy cup of grief to share, Thou hast borne all for me. Lest I forget tonight I hope we do have a wonderful great appreciation for what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross if you never received the Lord Jesus into your heart into your life as your Savior you're missing out and I want to invite you to receive him because all that he did on the cross was for you and if you have received Jesus as your Savior and you know him Let's love him even more because he first loved us. Let's